This time it's our pleasure to have uh, Melody and Becky and uh, be doing some special music and uh, also Becky is going to tell us a little bit about her upcoming mission trip to China and uh, perhaps to Kenya as well. And uh, so it's our pleasure. Please come forward, ladies. Well, I'm going to start off. And I just want to say how thankful we are to be here with you all. And uh, we just enjoy coming so much um, here to Collingswood throughout the years. And it's always been such a joy. And just knowing that you all are here praying for us when we're back in Chile. And that's always uh, such a blessing. And we just need it so much. And, you know, uh, this morning uh, Keith McCoy mentioned and, and we mentioned how we've been in Chile for over 20 years. And, and I think, well, I expect to feel like a veteran missionary or something, but I still feel like a rookie. <laughs> and the more the years go on, in fact, I keep thinking, well, aren't I supposed to be a great missionary by now? I'm not even a good missionary. But you know what? God is so good. He is so great. And he just keeps us going, and he helps us as we go along. Of course, it, we've got many trials. Um, everyone does. And it's not any different uh, because you cross the sea and, and uh, have the title of a missionary. Uh, we still have many, many trials and, and conflicts and problems to go through and times when we feel like giving up and we don't understand what God's doing. But we have to just go back to his word again and again and who he is and how great he really is and that his ways are not the same as our ways. In our last prayer letter, I use that verse because um, we saw as we came here to the United States, uh, what we had planned just didn't work out. <laughs> the Lord had other plans, but his ways are so much higher than ours. His thoughts um, cannot even be compared uh, to our thoughts. And um, so I'm going to sing tonight a, a hymn that I've probably sung before, but um, it just reminds us that his way is perfect no matter what, uh, no matter what happens. And even if we don't understand, we can say, well, Lord, it doesn't matter. I don't have to understand. I just have to trust because your way is perfect. <clears throat> when my life seems dark and drear and the future I don't know, my heart feels so empty as the tears unending flow. When my heart breaks with sorrow and a tempest fills my soul, this one thing I know for sure, my God is in control. His way is perfect, His way is perfect, though I don't understand His wise and loving plan, His way is perfect, His way is perfect, take my and make a vessel purified. God makes no mistakes. His way is best. When the toils of life are come and my heart is worn with care, I faint neath the burden of a cross I cannot bear. When the joy has departed from my sorrow-stricken soul, this one thing I know for sure, my God is in control. His way is perfect, His way is perfect, though I don't understand His wise and loving plan, His way is perfect, His way is perfect. His way is 
Well, hello, everybody. I was asked to come up here and just give a testimony of the way the Lord's leading in my life after college. Man, the last time I stood behind here, it was four years ago for my high school graduation. So it's hard to believe that so much time has passed and so much has happened between then and now. I graduated from Bob Jones University four, or not four years ago, two weeks ago. It's four years ago since I started. And I graduated, I majored in international studies with a minor in French. And throughout my college career, the Lord has taught me one thing. And he's taught me lots of things. But one thing that has stuck out the most, I think, is that his ways are not my ways. And like my mom was singing, his way is perfect all the time. And all we can do is trust it and follow it. And he will lead us all the way. And I've seen that throughout many major changes. By major changes, I mean changing my major three times. And until finally I settled on something that I thought was what the Lord wanted. I love different cultures and different languages, so international studies just seemed the way to go. And the Lord has used that greatly in my life. And now, as Mr. McCoy was saying, I have the great opportunity to go to Kenya um, and just next week, actually, on the SUM team with the Johnsons, I will be going for three weeks, and I'll be teaching um, the ladies at the technical college over there. So I'll be, I'll be teaching like a class, um, seven-day course, and I have to give a test at the end and everything. So that'll be my first real experience as a teacher, you could say. I've taught Sunday school before, but never really a in a formal class setting. So this is pretty exciting for me, and we'll get to visit orphanages and help with probably construction and painting. And I don't know what all um, Mr. Gary Johnson has planned for us, but I, I know we'll be doing a lot of work and helping uh, the locals over there, handing out vitamin A in the schools, um, passing out gospel tracts. Um, and so I'm just really excited uh, for the Lord to use me in that way, even though I don't feel at all capable, <laughs> but I'm very excited for what God has in store. Um, after that, I'll be coming back to the States um, for about a month and a half. I'll be with my family in North Carolina, and then in August, Lord willing, if, if everything works out, um, mid-August, I should be on my way to China. Um, the Lord has led me uh, to Shanghai, China. Uh, I've, I've signed a two-year contract over there, and I'll be teaching at an international high school um, that has just been started. They're in Shanghai. It, it's sort of related to Bob Jones. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about that. Um, but they only want to use Bob Jones curriculum, and they only want Bob Jones grads as teachers. So it's an amazing door that the Lord is opening over there in China for the gospel to be spread. And it's just incredible. They're in the midst of a communist country. And um, there is a nursing school over there, a nursing institute that trains um, uh, people with associate's degrees in nursing, and then they can transfer their degrees to Bob Jones. So we, at Bob Jones right now, there are several people from that Chinese school that have come and have gotten saved at Bob Jones as a result of that, that program. Um, and then they get to finish up their bachelor's in nursing there at, at BJ. Um, so anyways, the high school is sort of related to that, and this is the first year that's getting started. So we only have a few grades, I think like 9th, 10th, and 11th, and um, I'll be teaching English, most likely using the Bob Jones curriculum, and probably be teaching speech and music as well. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited. I ask for your prayers because this is something way out of my comfort zone that I never thought I'd be doing. <laughs> One of the things I told God when I was growing up, and the Lord, you know, he was convicting me about um, wanting me to serve him and stuff, and and yes, I, I I gave myself to the Lord and I said, Lord, I'll be a missionary anywhere you want me to, except China. <laughs> I never thought that I could go to China and embrace that culture and that language, which is so foreign to me still. I I, I can say ni hao and xie xie, that's about it. Hello and thank you. Um, and so the Lord has just, he's had to break me through through these years and showing me that his ways are not my ways. And the way the Lord has led it has been so incredibly obvious um, that this is his will for my life. He closed another door. I was I was planning on going to France right after I graduated because I love France. Um, I can definitely sense the need over there for the gospel, so I, I really feel called to France. Um, and so I was I was planning on going there right after graduation, but the Lord closed that door very very firmly. He kind of slammed it in my face. Um, and then the only other option that was open was was China and. Um, I, one other thing, I'll be go, I'll, I won't be going alone. Um, many of you know Pastor Joe McKnight. I will be going with his daughter, Beth McKnight, Elizabeth. Um, she and I became really good friends 
over the course of the year that we spent together at college. We were the same major. And so we actually get to go together and be teachers together over there, get to room together, um, not in the same rooms, but in the same dorm. Uh, so I'm just really excited that I don't have to face this new challenge alone and that there will be more Christian support over there. So I'd ask for your prayers as I embrace this new adventure that the Lord has prepared for me, that I would be a firm testimony for him, um, that, that I would know how to be careful. Um, I, I obviously can't publicly say too much about the gospel, but I can if they ask me, if the, if the children have a question or something, I can tell them about my faith. So just prayers for that, that I would be a light in the midst of a very dark communist country over there, and uh, that the Lord would use me. Thank you. Days are filled with sorrow and care, hearts are lonely and dreary, burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near, burdens are lifted at Calvary, Calvary. is very near. Corazón, sin gozo y paz, Cristo cerca está. En el Calvario sufrió por ti, ven con tus cargas ya. Mira la cruz al Señor singing and also for uh, Becky for your testimony to us this night. At this time uh, we'll present our offerings to the Lord. Let's join together in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, once again we thank you for your gracious gift to us, your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Father, for giving us the privilege of giving tonight. We pray that it will be truly heartily as unto the Lord. And Father, we pray for your blessings upon these gifts and those who give them for the glory of Jesus Christ. For we pray it in his name. Amen.
All right, in preparation for Brother Jim bringing a message tonight, let's turn to number 287. We'll sing all five verses. That gives me time to get to the balcony and to the sound room. 287, Wonderful Peace. And let's stand to sing.
to have Reverend Jim Buer with us tonight to proclaim God's word. Pray that you'll have open hearts and be ready to hear what God would have you not merely to know, but also to do. Brother Jim, come preach the word. Um, just uh, briefly before we get into the word, uh, again, uh, we, we, we thank you for the great um, uh, opportunity and, and, and privilege to, to, to be with you all. And, and this is uh, a place we, we always uh, love to be in many memories here from Becky's graduation to my baptism many years ago uh, here, keep on thinking in Spanish. Um, my my, um, my uh, baptism I was actually here in this church many years ago when I was a young person at the uh, Christian Admiral uh, Bible Conference working and came up here one Sunday and um, uh, we have very many uh, uh, fond memories here in this place and uh, we, we thank you for your prayers for us in, in Chile we are on kind of a whirlwind um, a furlough uh, and really an open door furlough where we came with no itinerary or nothing planned and we're thankful for ones that have had us with very short or little or no notice so far. Um, uh, we don't know all the Lord has for us in these four months, but we um, especially are here to, to, to be at our daughter's graduation. We made it barely. Um, and then to, um, to bring our son Jeremy to work in North Carolina, and we did that. Um, uh, to see Becky off to West Virginia, we hope to do that, Lord willing, this week. Um, to take For her to go to Kenya. And then which we're not looking forward to, to take her to China, but, but because we'll miss her soul. But, but we know the Lord um, will go with her. Um, and then we'll be taking Jeremy back to graduation, Lord willing, or back to Bob Jones in, in, uh, uh, in August, and then, Lord willing, back to Chile. Um, I'd like to turn your Bibles tonight to Genesis 22. This is a very familiar passage of Scripture. Uh, I, it is important to, to read it, but there, there are two verses that I want to emphasize in this passage um, of uh, Abraham's offering of Isaac. But there's something here tonight we'll be speaking on, the provision of God that flows from Calvary. The provision of God that flows from Calvary. And rather than give a, mes a message that's really a, a mis missionary message tonight, I, I thought we would give this um, that really has been a, a, a blessing to me this past year. Um, and uh, and some things from this passage I never really saw before until this year. Um, but uh, let's uh, turn in the Word, and I'd like to read from Genesis 22. Um, again, I'll be reading um, verse uh, 1 to 14, but especially um, I would like to emphasize verse 8 and 14. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell you thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad it will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Um, and Abraham uh, uh, took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went, both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, my father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told, them of, told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do, do thou anything unto him. For, thou, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. 
And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, and behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of, the place, of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this uh, privilege to, to, uh, to congregate in your name, um, and we pray that Christ would be honored in all that we do and say, and in the, matter, in the manner that we receive your word, give us uh, broken uh, and contrite hearts and spirits, Lord, to, 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 uh, to receive your word. And, and, and help us, Lord, not only to be hearers, but doers of, of your word, we pray. And, and, and Lord, as, as, as many of us are going through various uh, uh, challenges and, and uh, opportunities, perhaps trials, Lord, help uh, that we would see something from this passage tonight and that you would show us from your word, um, uh, uh, um, Lord, principles that will, will help us to be more than conquerors. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, as uh, we are here with, with you tonight, uh, it's, uh, it, we, we do think of, of our, our brethren uh, back in, in, um, in Chile. And uh, uh, we, uh, we missed our flight. Uh, well, we didn't actually miss our flight, but we made some mistakes that made us miss our flight. Um, uh, from Santiago, and we returned back to Arica, and and there um, at, we were glad actually that the Lord allowed a, that to happen because uh, uh, the elder, of, uh, uh, one of our elders of our church, he took me aside and he said, he said, well, I'm very concerned. It seems like you you don't trust us when when we're gone, when you're gone, and 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 I I, I tried to clear up the understanding. Oh yes, we we do trust you very much. It's just natural for. A missionary to be concerned, um, and we were concerned, especially for the young people, and leaving them um, uh, um, behind. Um, but but we know that the Lord will provide; the Lord will take care of them. Um, but very much in our hearts, and is a, is an anxious desire to see the Lord provide for many of the needs of of our work uh, in in Chile. Um, and we, many of you know that uh, Pastor uh, Jonathan, that his wife uh, Jeanette now. Is with cancer, and 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 we're praying for her. Um, we've been praying for a long time for the possibility of of of, of, of a seminary in, in Arica, and we still uh, don't know when that day might be. But um, but uh, one step that might be a step towards that, we have a young man who's a, a medical doctor in our church right now, and and um, he has a lot of desire to to serve the Lord, but has not had much training in the Word. And there may be an opportunity. He's he just recently moved back to Eureka, and and um, uh, maybe in, in our coming back we can have classes and night classes, perhaps with him. There, there but we are, are anxious uh, for the Lord's provision, uh, also in in matters and, and personal matters and desires for for our own family, our, our missionary children, and missionary children of others. Um, we uh, often. Uh, um, are anxious, um, desiring, and, and waiting upon the Lord for his provision for them. But we trust the words of this great passage here, Jehovah Jireh, that the Lord will provide. Um, and these words have become uh, very, very precious uh, 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 to us and very, very precious to me. They, Through the years, they have been precious to the Church of Christ, to Hudson Taylor to uh, George Mueller and others that that um, that uh, latched hold of this great promise that 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 the Lord will provide. Um, I, there are two statements here in this uh, passage tonight, and I'm not going to go too much into the story of, of Abraham um, offering up Isaac uh, because it is very familiar. But there are two statements that I, I would like to bring out here in in verse. Uh, Number eight and verse number fourteen, and and really they are um, these two statements. Really, to me, uh, have have opened up this passage here, um, uh, and and there are two statements of faith that that are that are are, are made here. One before Abraham 
climbed up the mount with his son Isaac, and then one after the Lord provided a substitute for him. And he was called to sacrifice his only son Isaac on the mountains of Moriah. And there's much significance in that, too. Becky and Melody tonight saying burdens are lifted at Calvary. That series of mountains, that range of mountains of Moriah, included what became the Temple Mount, Zion, we could say, the Temple Mount. And just a little further, just a short distance, in that same range of the mountains of Moriah, Mount Calvary was in that place. And here in Genesis 22, verse 8, before really understanding perhaps all the significance of what he was saying, there is a great prophecy here in this verse. Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And it was a prophecy, looking ahead to the day when God would provide himself a lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, for our sins. And this is man's greatest need. This is the greatest provision that man has, or that man has need of, is his provision of a Savior, because his biggest problem is that of sin. And 2,000 years ago, on Calvary, God provided a lamb, himself, the only one who had the value to take and bear the sins of the world. Christ did it on Calvary for all those that would receive him as their Savior. This is man's most primary and necessary need, and the provision that he needs above all else. Without it, he's lost and condemned to eternity in hell. But then in Genesis 22, 14, after God intervened and after this ram was provided and a substitute was made, then there is another statement. I'd like to read that to you, Genesis 22, 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen, or we could say in the mount of the Lord he will see to it, in the mount of the Lord. And here is something else that is very, very precious and very, very important. After the fact of God's provision of a substitute, he made this statement. We have a promise here. Jehovah-Jireh, God will provide. You know, it's something to me. It doesn't say what he will provide or when, but it says that he will. And here is a promise. We've had a prophecy. Here is a promise in these words, Jehovah-Jireh. And then there is a principle. And in these words, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen, or God will see to it in the mount of the Lord. Well, what does that mean? What is the significance of that? What does that tell us about God's provision for his children? Well, it tells us some wonderful things, actually. Here is a principle. In the mount he will see to it. This is the basis of the promise. It doesn't say when or what he will provide, but it does say that he will provide. You know, it's something that we've seen. This year we've gone through a lot of trial and crisis and family situations and other things and still are very much in them, but we trust the Lord for his provision. And he's promised to provide. And, you know, this year we've seen it in so many wonderful ways as well. When in Chile the Lord sent this last year a young man from North Ireland. 
He didn't know us. We didn't know him. But the Lord knew us and the Lord knew him. And he sent him to be with us for eight months. And he was a rock, really, for our youth group and a blessing to us. We had another girl that Becky met at the Wilds camp in North Carolina. And Becky told her, well, it would be a good experience for you to participate on a mission team. And my parents are missionaries. You could go visit them. And she said, okay, I'll go. And without knowing us, and maybe if she did know us, she would have thought about it again. But she accepted, and she didn't know our board. She didn't know us. And she came to help us. And we've never met such a Christ-like individual as Sarah Hughes. Or Anna Hughes, excuse me. I think I have a sister. But Anna Hughes. We've never seen such a consecrated young lady as her. And she was such a blessing to us. The Lord provides. In experiences on furloughs, it's incredible sometimes. I remember in some of our last furloughs that we've taken, and we've traveled out to the Bethany Bible Presbyterian Church out in Glendale, California. It's a long ways out there. And sometimes I have no idea. It just doesn't add up on paper how the Lord provided and helped us to get out there. It shouldn't add up. But somehow the Lord provides. We take issue. We take great issue with the prosperity gospel and the theology of prosperity. It's common where we are. There are preachers that will stand up and they say, if you give so much to this Lord's work, then the Lord will give you so much. No pastor can say that. No pastor has the authority to say that. No pastor honestly can say that. But that is going on. But what we can say is that when we do put the Lord first in our lives, that he will bless us. That's true. In many ways he will. And we can say he will provide. What? He may redefine our needs when we put him first and give him the place that belongs to him in our lives. But he does provide. He does provide as only he can. There are three great things here from this verse that I'd like us to see from these two verses. And there are really three facts on God's provision. But I want us to consider the provision of God that flows from Calvary. Because it's in the mount from Calvary. And because of Calvary that God provides for those who receive Christ as their Savior. And the basis of all of his other provision for us is because of what he did for us in Christ there. I want you to consider these three facts with us tonight. The first, the greatest provision of God is his provision for our sins. The first fact is this. God's provision comes through and on the basis of his provision for our sin. In the mount, you'll see to it. It is based on that prophecy of Abraham that God will give himself a lamb. And based on that, if we have received Christ as our Savior, and when we receive Christ as our Savior, from him and through him flow all other blessings to the believer. But the greatest provision of God is his provision for our sins on Calvary. If we have that, we have everything. If we don't have that, we have nothing. It is the primary, essential need of man as a substitute for his sins. So we are burdened as we see young people just thinking only about careers, only thinking about the material, only thinking, fascinated about the world, and no interest in the Savior. And how misled they are. 
how blind uh, they are, how blind we were before God opened our eyes um, uh, to, to see Christ, um, to see the substitute. As Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the ram, um, uh, if we have him and nothing else, we have, we have everything. Um, and because he has done the greater, he will do the lesser. Uh, remember uh, Romans 8.32 that says, He that spared not his own son, how shall he not freely give us all things? I had a lot of time studying Romans 8 because I was studying Romans 8 on the bus from, from Takna to, to Lima, and it was supposed to take 18 hours a trip, and it took 30 instead because of some rivers that had come down and covered the road, and, and we were stopped and stuck in many places. But I had a, a good time studying Romans uh, chapter 8. But but there in those last verses, the, Paul makes the argument in several uh, uh, cases of, of if God has done the greater, well, then he'll do the lesser. If God before us, and I remember always at the, at the Christian Admiral, there was that big pulpit with that verse uh, on the pulpit for every preacher to remember when he stood up there. If God before us, who can be against us? Um, if, if God... If he, he, he that spared not his own son, if he did that, won't he give us also what we need? Uh, shall not he pro provide freely all things as well? If he's done the greater, um, he will do uh, the lesser as well, and that we can believe. Um, Christ's death on, on Calvary for the believer opens the floodgates of God's blessing. He's the ladder that... Uh, Jacob saw between heaven and earth that the angels ascend upon and descend upon um, uh, between heaven and earth. And it's, it's for Christ's sake that God does provide for the believer that has received Christ as his substitute and as his Savior. He's now reconciled. He now has access. Um, he now is adopted um, as God's Son, and he has the right and the privilege to cry, Abba, Father, to God, um, uh, because Christ um, reconciled him and reconciled us to him. If we, the key really is this, um, the God's provision uh, comes through and on the basis of the provision for, of his provision for us. And in the mount, you'll see to it, in the mount of Calvary, um, and based upon Calvary, um, God provides for the believer because he's already provided his salvation if he's received Christ. If, if we have that the greatest problem of man is sin, the greatest problem of the world is sin, the greatest um, need of man is a Savior. There is no greater than that. Then if we do receive Christ as our Savior and have Christ as our Savior, there's another great fact here. It, it, it's that God's provision shall be revealed in the time and place of our greatest need. My, that's a wonderful thing. Um, God's provision shall be revealed in the time and place of our greatest uh, need. Uh, why didn't God provide the ram before um, Abraham climbed that mountain. Why at the last moment when he had the knife raised? Well, maybe we can't answer that perfectly, but, but um, it would have been a lot easier, obviously, had God provided before. But, but no, he provides in the mount. In the mount, he will see to it. Uh, in, in, the mount of our, in the mount, in the moment of our greatest need, he will provide. Um, that all might see that it was the Lord that did it and no one else. And he wants us, in the meantime, to be trusting. He wants us, in the meantime, to be praying. He wants us, in the meantime, uh, to be obedient. Um, and many times he'll allow us to be in these difficult, impossible, um, compounded, difficult situations um, so that we might have the sentence of death in ourselves that we would not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead. Um, and, and then God works. Um, 
when we are led to the brink of the Red Sea, that's when we see the salvation of the Lord. When we lift our eyes up to Him and trust in Him totally and wholly, that's when the Lord provides. So many times, well, where's the Lord's provision? Where's the Lord's provision? Have we trusted totally and entirely in Him? He wants us to. In one of the messages over the years at the Christian Admiral that was the most memorable to me was when Georgie Vins preached some years ago. And he preached on, he spoke of the persecuted church in Russia. And he spoke from 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. That has always been the testimony of the Church of Christ. This last year, when this girl, Anna, that was with us, her dad went to be with the Lord. And I don't know. I sat down and wrote some lines of poetry. And I've been finding myself doing that in these months when going through different trials and things. And they've ministered to my heart at times. But just to sum up these verses, just a few lines I wrote here that the Christian often will be boxed in with trouble all about. But the grace of God is ever present to show him the way out. He'll often know not what to do. Dark clouds obscure the way. But Christ's face that shines upon him gives him hope for each new day. Foes gather to oppose him, to make him run and hide. But Christ will not forsake him, nor ever leave his side. Satan's blows may knock him down, but by the spirit that's within, he'll get up again, and through God's grace, the battle he will win. And that kind of summarizes these verses of 2 Corinthians. But here, God often will allow us to be pressed against the sea to show us his salvation. But in the hour, in the time, in the moment of our greatest need, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. The last point that I'd like to consider is this, that God's provision shall come where our faith and obedience are placed to the greatest test and come out triumphant. Abraham was put to a great test. And when he exercised his faith in God and when he exercised obedience to the fullest degree, God called down from heaven. God intervened. God worked in his behalf. God provided, didn't he? And this is a wonderful thing that in Hebrews 11, we see that the thinking of Abraham, he had never seen anyone raised from the dead before. He had, of course, known of Enoch and how that he was translated and how he went to heaven without dying, but he had never seen anyone raised from the dead before. But he believed that if God would tell him to sacrifice his son Isaac, then that he would raise him from the dead because he had promised that his seed would be through Isaac. Such faith he had. Such faith had Abraham. But it's often that we see that when we, well, his faith and his obedience was placed to the greatest test and it came out triumphant. And often we will see that when we are willing to give up the desires of our heart for Christ, that's when he often grants them. And again, when we put Christ in his proper place in our life, he will also redefine our desires and redefine our needs. Oh, I need this, I need this, I need this. Do you? Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't. Maybe we need to be closer to Christ. Maybe we need to experience more his presence and his fellowship. Maybe we need his comfort in sorrow. 
maybe we need these things. But it's a wonderful promise, and I'm glad that there's – it's a – that is not specified. It is general. Jehovah Jireh, God will provide, based on the greatest provision that he has given to men at Calvary. In the mount he will do it. In the moment, in the place where our faith and obedience are placed to their greatest test and come out triumphant, Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. We think of these great statements here, and Isaac, he asks the question, Dad, where's the lamb? Where's the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham responded, God will give himself, the Lord will give himself a lamb, provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. And then – well, not 2,000 years, but 1,400 years later or so, in the cross of Calvary, and before that when Christ began his public ministry, we have the words of John the Baptist in John 1.29, Behold the Lamb of God, he had come. The lamb that Isaac asked where he was, the lamb that Abraham said would come, John the Baptist proclaimed he had come. Behold the Lamb of God that will take away the sins of the world, and he died on Calvary. If you have that provision, you have everything. If you don't have that provision for your salvation, for your eternity, you have nothing. We need to put in perspective our greatest needs. Our greatest need is Christ. I'm going to come to a close here in just a few moments, but it is interesting to me, and as we listen to the news and things and the Jewish people, the Muslims, they both covet Mount Moriah, where the Dome of the Rock is, and where the temple stood, and they both covet that place. But we can say that though they revere it, they don't understand it. They don't understand it. They don't understand that in that place 2,000 years ago, the greatest need of man was met when God gave his son to die on the cross for our sins. And they seek other things, and they trust in works, but the greatest need of man was met 2,000 years on Calvary. And if we receive that provision, we have everything. Christ is all and in all. If you have him, you have all. If we don't have him, we have nothing. But he is, God gave 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary, the greatest provision that man needs, his need of a Savior. And those that have Christ as their Savior, from Calvary flow all other blessings. In the mount, he'll see to it. It's in Christ's sacrifice on Calvary that he meets the provision of our sins. And in the mount, in our time of greatest need, that Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. And in the place where our faith and obedience to the Lord come out triumphant, God will provide. It's a promise. It's a promise based on a principle and based on a prophecy that was completed 2,000 years at Calvary. And it's a wonderful thing to me. And the one thing, you know, looking back these 20 years as a missionary, I can say that God provides. Maybe not always the way we want, when we want, what we want, but God provides all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And he knows what we need most. Trust him. Trust him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
trust him. Um, we just want to leave this wonderful verse with you that's been a blessing to so many giants of the Christian faith over the years, as I mentioned, Hudson Taylor, George Mueller, and others. They trusted this promise. They believed it. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we know that in all of our hearts there are yearnings that we have and desires that we have and burdens that we have, um, needs that we have, spiritual needs that we have, uh, burdens for the needs of others. Lord, we all have that in our hearts. Think of our, our people back in Eureka, Chile right now. But you've promised that in the mount you'll see to it. You've, you've promised that you will provide for those who have received the greater provision um, of, of, of salvation through Christ as their Savior. And Lord, if there be anyone here who has never received that, that provision, help them to do it, Lord. Without it, they have nothing. But with it, all things. And Lord, for, for every believer here that we're waiting uh, and anxious, Lord, you, you want us to keep on praying. You want us to keep on obeying. You want us to be, keep on, on being faithful. And in the time of greatest need and when our faith and obedience are come out triumphant, you'll provide in the wonderful way that only you can. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.